Hi everyone. I'm Lab Loy Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Department of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. This is in Korean. Here is the part two of the presentation. Paul is on seismic evaluation and retrofit of school buildings and low-rise buildings in Taiwan too. Given at the forum on improving policies and regulations through lessons learned from the 2017 Pohan earthquake in Seoul, Korea. What is the role of ANCRI in, this, in the program of upgrading seismic performance of school buildings? ANCRI, our center, was entrusted by the Ministry of Education to provide technological and administrative support to the program, including to develop methods for evaluation and retrofit for professional engineers to establish and maintain database for decision making for education officials, to draft operation specification for detailed evaluation, retrofit design and inspection for professional engineers and school administrators, to assign peer review for seismic evaluation and retrofit design, to hold workshop for engineers school administrators, education officials. In order to give technological support to the Ministry of Education, the ANCRI have done a lot of research, including experimentally and theoretically. And here is Ho Chao Junior High School, and we would like to study the performance, the seismic performance of a school building. And it is impossible to duplicate a whole building, the whole building in the laboratory and study its seismic performance. Therefore, the school building has been simplified. And here is a three-story building, and we just take two-story building in the laboratory and the there are so many classrooms in a row of a building, and only one, class un one classroom unit is taken to be the specimen of the, the specimen for the test in the laboratory. In 2004, according to the building in Hoja Junior High School, and a classroom, a unit of a classroom is duplicated in the laboratory and only plain frame and along the direction of the corridor because along the direction of the corridor is the weakest port, weak, is the weak direction of the building and this is a full size uh, specimen with uh, doors and windows and this specimen, no retrofit is applied yet and a cycle loading test is applied to the to the specimen. From the result of the experimental test, we have the relationship between base shear and first floor dis displacement, and is the hysteresis loop of the displacement and base shear. And from the result, we know that the maximum base shear strength of the specimen is about four hundred kilonewton. And the red one, the red line here, is the envelope of the hysteresis room. Another specimen, we use RC jacketing to upgrade the seismic performance of the building. And the green one, and the green line, is the envelope of the hysteresis room of the building, of the specimen with reinforced concrete jacketing. And uh, by observing these two lines, after retrofit, the maximum strength, the maximum base shear force strength has been increased from 40, 
8 ton force to 88.23 ton, 23 ton force. Therefore, the strength of the base shear has been increased, enhanced considerably. And also, the deformation capacity has increased a lot. Therefore, reinforced concrete jacketing is effective, is a effective method. In addition to, in addition to reinforced concrete jacketing, retrofit with adding wind walls and steel jacketing were also studied in the laboratory in 2004. In January 2005, we conducted in-situ tests at Xincheng Junior High School in Hualien County. A school building in Xincheng Junior High School was about to, to be demolished. Before the, the demolishment, we would like to perform some tests to study the seismic performance of this building. And uh, in the building, there are so many classrooms arranged in a row, and we take two or three classrooms as the specimen. And then one of the span is removed, and instead we have installed the oil jet between the specimen and also the reaction classroom. Okay, this is the specimen of the classroom, and this is the reaction provided to the oil jets. And uh, some uh, braces are added to enhance the strength of the reaction classroom. And this is the elevation view. This is the plan view of the specimen. This is the specimen, and uh, this is the reaction classroom. In between, oil jets are installed. The piston area of the oil jet are carefully designed so the piston area is in the ratio 1 to 2, 1 for the second floor, 2 for the roof floor, so that the forces are applied to the specimen in the ratio of 1 to 2, 1 for the second floor, and 2 for the roof. And you simulate the pattern of the deformation of the building under earthquake. In January 2005, we have just performed the in-situ test at Xincheng Junior High School. And here's, uh, here is the result of the in-situ test. It's a pushover, monotonic pushover test. And this here is the relationship between base shear and roof displacement. And observed from this uh, relationship, we found that the maximum base shear is about 3,000 kN. In addition to the specimen without retrofit, we also study the vertical bearing capacity, capacity of the partition walls. In July 2005, we moved to Yunlin County and performed in situ tests at Kouhu Elementary School. And here is the specimen of pure frame that means that there's no infill walls. And here's the specimen, infill with brick walls. And we study the difference between the one without brick wall and the one with brick walls. And the bad line here is the result from pure frame, the specimen of pure frame. The purple line here is the result for the specimen infill with brick walls. As observed from these uh, two lines, we can find that the contribution of the brick walls cannot be neglected. In the presence of brick walls, the max the base shear strength has been increased substantially. In addition to the specimen with brick walls, we also study the specimen with retrofitted with reinforced concrete wind walls. In July 2006, we moved to Taoyuan County and conducted uh, in-situ tests at Yuipu Elementary School. And here's the specimen with the retrofit, and here is the specimen with sandwich 
column. Sandwich column is to add reinforced concrete column so that the partition wall is sandwiched between the between the columns. The black line here is the result from the specimen west of retrofit. The purple one is the result of the specimen with sandwich column retrofitted. And uh, you can be observed that the basic strength has been increased substantially and also the deformation capability has also been increased. And in addition to uh, to the one retrofitted with a sandwich column, another specimen uh, conducted with a cyclic test so that we can compare the result of cyclic test and monotonic test. In July 2007, we moved to Tainan County and performed in situ test at Guan Mao Elementary School. This is the sp a specimen with no retrofit, and this is the specimen with reinforced concrete jacketing of the columns. The black line is the experimental result of the specimen without retrofit, and the purple line is the one with reinforced concrete jacketing retrofit. And you can be observed that the basic strength has been increased substantially and the deformation capability has also been increased. Therefore, reinforced concrete jacketing, the method, the retrofit method with reinforced concrete jacketing is effective. In addition to reinforced concrete jacketing, post-tension rock and adding steel frame, these two other methods were also studied in Guan Mao Elementary School. To sum up all the research results, including experimental results and theoretical results, a handbook was published. The first version was published in 2008, the second version in 2009, the third version in 2013. In this handbook, the seismic evaluation method was provided and also seismic retrofit and acceptance criteria, the criteria to, to determine whether the, the performance, the seismic performance of the building is qualified or not. As we mentioned, all the results from all the stages have to be submitted to entry so that we have the information of all the buildings with this information, we can put a curve something like that. The horizontal axis is the seismic capacity of the building in preliminary evaluation. And the vertical axis is the accumulated floor area. So that if I is less than 80, the building has to move to the next stage, detailed evaluation. If the IS is greater than 80, then the building has been eliminated from the program. And according to the annual budget, we can determine how many buildings can be conducted for the detailed evaluation. And the priority of the detailed eva evaluation follows the results of primary preliminary evaluation. That means that the lower the seismic capacity the higher the priority for detailed evaluation. Similar decision making can be conducted, can be done for retrofit design and retrofit implementation. Since the number of school buildings involved in this program is so huge, in order to have a certain quality for evaluation, retrofit design and retrofit and retrofit implementation. Therefore, specification has to be standardized. In this program, we have a draft uh, operation specification and also example contract for the Ministry of 
education. Operation specification including preliminary evaluation, detailed evaluation, retrofit design, and inspection. And there are also some example contracts for evaluation, for retrofit design, for retrofit implementation, so that the school administrator can refer to this example contract to open the bid for evaluation and retrofit design and retrofit implementation. It takes about three months to retrofit a school, a school building and two years to reconstruct a school building. And it costs about $3,000 per square meter of floor area to retrofit a school building and $24,000 per square meter of floor area to reconstruct a building. Therefore, 3 divided by 24 is 1 over 8. 3 divided by 24 is 1 over 8. No matter in terms of time or money, retrofit is just one eighth that for construction, for reconstruction. Therefore, to compete with time, we don't know when will be the next earthquake. Retrofit is the best solution since Taiwan is seismically active area. Therefore, to compare the com to prepare for the coming earthquake, just retrofit the existing building. And here is the website for the program. And there's a lot of information can be found in this website. And here's the link to the part one of the presentation. And uh, this current presentation will be uploaded in this channel. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.